Hey guys, you are welcome to my YouTube channel, Tutor Med, where everything medicine is simplified. Now, before you start your clinical rotation as a medical student or a physician's assistant, you need to watch this video to the end because in this video, I explain the basic duties of a medical student or a medical doctor and then a physician's assistant because all of us are clinicians. Now, whether a medical doctor or a physician's assistant in training, our patients require only two things from us to be able to diagnose their medical conditions and to manage their health problems. Now, to be able to understand and diagnose a patient's condition, we need to understand that the medical profession, whether a medical doctor or a PA, is a combination of three different professions. Number one, we need to have the curiosity of a police detective. The police detective looks for human culprits to arrest, but we look for disease culprits. The question, who is responsible for the patient's complaints, is a question we always ask ourselves. And it is our curiosity which drives us to begin the search, this time not as a police detective, but as a clinical detective. Next. Clinicians are lawyers, and here, the characteristic is that we need to be convincing as a lawyer. We present cases providing convincing evidence that such a disease is responsible for the patient's problem. And this happens a lot when we are presenting our cases to our superiors. In the case presentation, we provide justifiable and convincing reasons why we think our patients have a particular disease. And so we argue out our points as though we are lawyers. And so first as a clinical detective and then as a lawyer. Then the third profession within the medical profession is that we are judges. And we should be convicting as a judge. Here, we should be clear in our minds that after being curious and after being convincing, we think that disease A is um, the disease that is causing the patient's problems. And that is how we make the diagnosis. And so in summary, our profession has three ramifications. One profession, but with three branches. First, as a clinical detective, as a clinical lawyer, and then as a clinical judge. Now, we apply these three ramifications using the clinical method. The clinical method is the universally laid down procedure used by clinicians to diagnose disease conditions. It is the same thing that is used in Ghana, used in the Bahamas, US, UK. And so the first thing we do is that we conduct a medical interview or what we call the clinical history taking. And here we talk to our patients with empathy and with the curiosity of the detective. We have a rationale for asking every question and we listen attentively. Then the next thing is to examine the patient still with the curiosity of a detective looking for who is responsible or what is responsible for the patient's condition. And then we order for investigations as detectives and then interpret these investigations wearing the robe of the lawyer and the cap of a judge. And so the medical interview or the clinical issue taking, the physical examination and then relevant investigations. Now in examination, we use our eyes for inspection for clinical signs and then our nose to smell for any clues like the fruity odor smell of diabetic ketoacidosis. Then we use our hands for palpation where we touch the patient and the same hands for percussion. And yes, we need our ears to listen to certain parts of the patient's body. Now in truth, long before the invention of stethoscopes, we used our ears to listen for heart sounds and breath sounds. As in this picture, you can see clearly that an astute clinician is auscultating with his ears. You can see that the medical profession 
has evolved over the years, right? Very good. And when we come to investigations, depending on which ones will help diagnose and manage the patient, we have different categories. Investigations can be grouped into hematological investigations, like the full blood count. We have the biochemistries. An example is the liver function test. We have microbiological investigations. Examples, the blood culture and sensitivity. Radiological investigations include a chest x-ray, the abdominal radi radiograph, or the head CT scan. Then we have special tests like the ECG. We use these investigations to diagnose suspected conditions. And so now with the cap of the judge, once you judge or make a diagnosis, you should tell the patient and let him know the prognosis of his or her diagnosis. Is the prognosis good or bad? Because one, patients deserve to know their diagnosis and they have the right to know their survival rates. That is one of the core functions of a medical doctor or a physician's assistant. Now, right after the patient gets to know his diagnosis, the next question he would ask you is, what next? And so we need to know the management of our patients. So the first thing to do is to stabilize the patient. And this means you keep the patient alive, keep the vital organs functioning till definitive management or treatment is instituted. And so here you make sure that the patient has a patent airway, the breathing of the patient is spontaneous and then normal, and then you check whether the circulation is good enough to perfuse the organs of the body. Once the patient can do this, then the patient is stabilized, although he has not received definitive management. Then the next thing to do is to determine if the patient's condition is one which needs a higher referral or a referral to the specialist. Keeping the patient at your health facility or in your health facility when the patient needs a referral wouldn't help the patient at all. Sometimes the greatest good we can do for our patients is to refer them. Like I said, it is not good to keep your patient after stabilization when he could have benefited from a prompt referral. We should know when to refer patients and they will be very thankful. Now, assuming after assessment, you think that the patient appropriately does not need a referral, we need to manage the patient using the principles of management. And so first, we identify and treat any reversible underlying cause of the condition. For example, if we think the patient has malaria, the reversible cause or the underlying cause is actually the plasmodium parasite. And so we need to give anti-malarials. And usually, when we treat the underlying cause, the symptoms would go away. But sometimes, while treating or while waiting for the process of um, reversing the underlying cause with the anti-malarial, it may take long for the patient's headache to be resolved, the patient's fever to be resolved. And so we treat the symptoms so that the patient gets better. And so whilst giving the anti-malarial, for example, we have to give paracetamol for the fever and then the headaches. Then, knowing the natural history or natural progression of a disease is very helpful because it helps us anticipate the complications this condition or that condition will come with so we can prevent them or even if they have already occurred, we manage them. And so the principles of management are to treat any reversible underlying cause to manage the symptoms and then to anticipate and then prevent or manage the complications. And so what modes of management do we give our patients? Our patients want to know the various modes of management. So we have the conservative management. And here we need to realize that it is not all conditions we treat with medications. Some of them require serial monitoring and some of them require counseling against certain lifestyles. And so that is conservative management. 
For example, if a patient has a renal cyst, you may want to do serial monitoring to ensure that it has not progressed to a bad cyst. A patient has um, a ureteric stone who doesn't need um, medications or surgery, you can do serial monitoring and that is also an example of a conservative management. Then we have another mode of management called the medical management. Here we use drugs or medications to treat patients and this is also known as the pharmacological management. Then we have the surgical intervention or the surgical management where predominantly invasive procedures are used to treat the patient. So it may require abdominal surgeries, it may require interventional um, radiological procedures and so the conservative and surgical management can be seen as non-pharmacological management while the medical management can be seen as a pharmacological mode of management. And so this summarizes the work of the medical doctor and the, physici um, the physician assistant. Thank you for watching this video and do not forget to like and share this video. Subscribe to our channel to support us. See you in the next lecture and until then, bye!